Good morning. I um, decided that I would show you guys an editing video. Um, on Wednesday, I did a Facebook Live showing you a behind the scenes uh, tour of my studio, um, where hopefully you got to get a little better idea of what it's like to be there and what goes into a newborn shoot. Um, so now I thought I'd take that another step further and show you um, the editing process, um, just a little peek of it. So this is a baby I shot, um, one of the first babies in the new studio, one of my favorite sessions. I absolutely loved her whole entire session. Um, she's beautiful, she posed perfectly, the light was amazing. Um, and this is one of my favorite pictures from it. It's one that I use on my website a lot. Um, so I thought I'd show you how I take that from point A to finished. So um, if you can see down at the bottom of the screen, those are the 30 images that I called from her session. Um, after I shoot the session, I immediately load the images from the card onto my computer, and then I go through and I pick my favorites, either 12, 18, or 30, depending on what package you booked. And um, this baby had 30 in her package, so um, she had a nice wide variety, and... Um, and I always include at least one or two from every setup we did. So this was one of my favorites. I just love everything about it. Um, so let me show you. I shot it pretty dark. Um, I don't have any fill light in my studio. If you saw the tour, um, it's still up on my Facebook page if you didn't. Um, it's pinned at the top. But if you saw the tour, you see that there's no windows. I turn off all overhead lights. So the only light in my studio is from the giant softbox, well, the umbrella and the Einstein light that I have. So this is what it looked like, whoops, sorry. This is what it looked like straight out of camera. Real dark, she was pretty um, jaundiced, as was her sister when her sister was born, although she wasn't as bad. Um, but the shadowing is perfect. I just need to lighten it up a little bit and change the crop. So um, what I did was, that's where I took it to um, before I put it into Photoshop. So right now I'm in Lightroom. Um, I just took the exposure up a little bit, added a bit more contrast, took down the highlights, increased the shadows a little bit, um, increased the darks a significant amount, a little bit more down on the highlights in this region, and then I took the orange, which is going to get the jaundice out in most babies, not actually the yellow. I took that down pretty significantly as well. So that's all I did there, and um, it made a pretty big difference, and then I changed the crop a little bit. We'll tackle this area up here in Photoshop. All right, so let's go there. So I will export this and we'll just export it. I export as TIFF files. Um, we're just gonna do this one right to the desktop. Now, if I was doing this as part of my normal workflow, um, I would rename them with the baby's name after Animal Miss Photography and then the year. And I would export all of them at the same time. And I have um, a system that I use after that called my these auto loader that um, lets me kind of edit them faster than normally. It's not batch processing, but it's it's how I like to do it. So now I'll open it with Photoshop. All right, so I had a custom action created for me um, out of all the steps that I did on my typical newborn photos, it combined that for me. So what I would first do is I would um, fix anything that needed fixed. Like this corner up here, I see little spots down here. I'm not sure if you can see those great with your computer. Um, there's a little bit like of a bump in her bonnet. I will fix that. Um, and then I'll take away any flakes that are in her skin. But other than that, like it's pretty, pretty good to start running my action. So to fix the spot in the blanket, I will use um, the clone stamp or the paint tool. In this case, I'll use the paint tool because it's a pretty solid color. There's not really any texture up there. So I'll put a new layer, I'll get the sample, and I'll just paint it right on there. All right, so that's that. I'll flatten it, and then I'll come down, I'll zoom way in, I'll get my spot healing brush tool, and I'll just get out, I'm pretty picky, I get out pretty much every little flake that I see or any like stray fuzz. And she has really nice skin. She doesn't really have anything. She just has a little bit on her lips and her eyelids. 
and this is a personal preference. I like to take out anything that's not permanent. So um, if she had a birthmark, I would leave that in, but any like sort of pimple, blemish, scratch, dry skin that won't necessarily even be there in an hour, I take that out. And she, like I said, she looks great. Okay, so for the bonnet, there's a couple ways you could try and fix this little spot. Um, you could liquefy it. Um, I think I'm just gonna try to use the clone stamp on it this time and just make it a little rounder. I am extremely picky. All right, that looks much better to me. All right, so let's zoom back out. All right, and then, like I said, I'm real picky. She has just, she's posed perfectly, but there's this tiny little like hump in her back. So I am going to flatten that again and use the liquify and just make her perfectly rounded just by pulling up the teeniest bit and pushing down there. I'm super, super perfectionist about that kind of stuff. But I believe that that makes um, the difference in your newborn portraits. I think you look at your baby with a rosy glow. So there we go. All right, so now I will run my big action and um, it's gonna look funny at first, but then we're gonna go through the steps and kind of fix everything that it does. So it is called Beanbag 2. So first it's telling me to pick a color. So it's going to help blend the background even more than it is already. So I'm going to pick a color close to the baby's head, hit OK, and then it's going to run the rest of the action. And that'll um, take us through pretty much everything. Just takes a minute and it'll take a little bit longer now since the video is recording. All right, so there we go. So the first thing, the bottom step is it overall sharpens it for me. I don't have to change anything there. The next step, because we're going bottom up, is selectively sharpen. So all I do there is I just paint that right on her eyelashes to just sharpen those up. And she has nice eyelashes. So you can't see that it did anything right there, but it did. Um, it's just the way that the actions run. This next step is portraiture, which is the skin smoothing. So I like skin smoothing, but I do brush it off of her hair because we want to see all of that detail and texture and her eyebrows and eyelashes because we don't want any of that smooth. And then sometimes, depending on the baby, I'll brush off of um, their hands too. Okay, so this is the even backdrop step, which it just gave us a little bit more evenness um, on the blanket that she's laying on, but we need to brush it off of her so it doesn't cover her up at all. So that's what I'm doing now. Just taking it off of her, but leaving it totally on the rest of the image. It also has a small noise layer built in, and what that does is um, it makes sure there's no banding, which is like some lines that you can sometimes see when you have a pretty solid background. Okay, so no red skin. Um, this is going to be good on her. So we're going to take a low opacity white brush and just kind of dab it on her where her skin is a little bit more red than we would want it to be. Like I said, it won't necessarily be red even in an hour from now. So we want her to have a nice, healthy skin tone. And if we go too far on this, we can always back it off. Um, what I like to do is check their skin I'm on their forehead. I'm looking at these numbers that were up here when I do that. And um, those, those numbers look good to me. We'll lighten her up a little bit. I might actually put a little bit more red back on that eye because it's looking a little yellow to me now. Okay, perfect. So no purple skin, that just any sort of purple tones. I usually have purple tones right above the baby's lips. I will take that out. Sometimes their hands are a little bit purple. Um, warmer, she does not need any warmth. And then lips is the next thing. Um, I like to add with certain babies, not all of them. Just enhance the color of their lips a little tiny bit. See, it's not really doing anything. And then I'll brush a little bit on their cheeks too, just to enhance that. Um, don't need any magenta, don't need, well, we might take a little bit of yellow out around her nose and eye area. Like I said, she was pretty jaundiced. Okay, and then um, these next things, don't need any adjustments yet. 
What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna check the highlights and make sure nothing's overexposed. And for my images, there usually are some parts. So then I dial this step, the highlight boots to back. Sorry about my one-year-old in the background. Okay, so these areas in red are telling me that that's close to being blown out in the red channel. So I'm going to back the highlights off until that disappears, at least on a, her skin. I don't mind it so much if it's on a bonnet because then I can just, with a black brush, I know this is confusing if you don't know Photoshop, but I'll just paint it off of the bonnet there. Cause that, that just brightened the photo a little bit, but I don't want it too bright on the areas that I don't want bright basically. All right, so I still feel like she could be a little bit lighter in this image. So what I'm gonna do now is go to curves and just pull up very slightly on the midtones. And there, I like that a lot. Um, yep, that looks good to me. And I'm so picky, I am gonna add a little bit of magenta back into that one eye. I feel like it got a little yellow when I was removing my red. So there we go. Um, one final step that I'll sometimes do is I will sometimes do a little bit more skin smoothing. Um, you can see here that she had a little diaper line. So I'll just get that out. And I'm gonna dial this back because that's a little strong there. Okay. All right, so that's about it. Um, there are a few other things that you could do. Um, if sometimes I'll do a little bit more of like a haze um, with that action called tummy time. And it's all personal preference and I eyeball every image and make a judgment call. I do kind of like it, dial it back a bit. Um, another thing that I'll sometimes finish up with um, is this action right here called Muted from Aaron Toll um, Actions. I believe that's who it's from. And it always comes on really strong. Sometimes I'll take it off completely, um, but I'll always at least dial it back a little bit. So I will, let's see if I take it down to 15%. It made a little bit of a brighter difference. And again, when you do all this, you have to then go back and make sure you didn't overdo anything. So I feel like it's these little steps kind of at the end that make a big difference. Um, and that's just photographer's judgment. Um, it's a judgment call on how you want your images to look. All right, so that is still good. All my numbers in the red channel up here are still under 255. All right, so that's it. I would um, save that and be done and move on to the next image. So thank you for watching. And whoops, I need to flatten it first. And if you have any questions, um, let me know in the comments. And if you want to book your session, send me an email. Thanks, guys.